Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. You guys seem to really love planetariums and there's been a lot of discussion on my previous reviews. So I mentioned the Dark Skies Planetarium. So I got in touch with the manufacturer and they said, yes, we'd love to show off the Dark Skies to your audience who clearly love planetariums. They've sent it over. It's worth noting, this is not like some of the mass market planetariums that I've reviewed before. There's currently only 2,000 of these in the first run, so they are pretty hard to get hold of. If you're interested and you like this, I will put a link in the description below. So this has been kindly provided to me to review by Miller Engineering. And it's arrived today, and it's the first time I've seen it. So let's have a look what you get. The instruction manual bag of some sort. Now there's discs here, they've actually sent me more discs than you would normally get so I can show off some of the others and, and straight away these look very impressive, they look really detailed. Here we go, this is the main body of it and at the bottom there's a little box of bits. Oh very nice, now I wasn't sure how I was going to power this, thought I might need an adapter, it comes with a US adapter and there's also a UK adapter. Um, sorry, that's a European adapter. It comes with a European adapter. The US one was already on the plug. And I will swap that out for a UK adapter. There's actually four. Oh, I got that wrong as well. There's four adapters. So there's something for everyone. So you should be pretty well covered whether you're in the US or Europe quite a different design to previously reviewed planetariums. Most of the time, the ones that I've tried are uh, it's like a globe and they just project forwards. This, I can see the projector on the top, but it's got the nice little constellation around the sides. This is a nice looking unit. So you've got just the power input on the bottom and there's the power on off switch. Here's the disc loading tray with various controls around the side. You can move this very slowly Stops there and how far does it go? Yeah, it goes with full 90 degrees. So you can either point it up at the ceiling or you could aim it elsewhere. It wouldn't point down though, so if you were looking to mount this and project it down, it doesn't go all the way that round. Nice design on the bottom as well. First impressions, this is a lovely looking planetarium. It's got the constellations around the side. It feels good quality. Quite excited by this, let's, uh, let's get one of these discs out and power it on. So while I wait for the sun to set, let's just check out where you can get this from. At the time of review, it's only available from the manufacturer and the website, I'll put a link to this in the description below, is dark-skies.com. When it comes to purchasing, you've got two options. You've got the Chrome version and the standard version. The standard being $42995 and the Chrome being $53995. If you are purchasing and having it shipped in the US, it will be an additional $32 shipping. International shipping will be around $85, and they're looking to start shipping internationally January onwards. If you're in the UK, please note you may need to pay some additional charges. I had to pay just over £36 before this was delivered to me. So the main difference is that you get the Chrome disc with the Chrome version and that substitutes the 1.4 million star for the 4.1 million star disc and that's chrome on glass disc so that's that's a pretty hefty bump up in the number of stars you can get if you scroll down you can see the uh, basic specs so you've got the height of 11 inches it weighs four pounds and the construction's aluminium alloy it's also worth noting they do a range of different discs so as well as the ones that you get included you can always purchase some additional ones and so you can see they've actually got a huge range which uh, is really nice to see I, I reviewed the national geographic planetarium recently and they only had two discs whereas you can see here there's absolutely loads of them each unit comes with its own serial number printed on it and the geek in me is a little bit gutted i got 1720 instead of 1701 like many of the other planetariums I've had a look at, this has controls that light up in the dark, which is very handy. You've got the power button, you've got the shooting star button, you can choose the rotation, it can either go clockwise or counterclockwise. You can choose the speed of the rotation, there's three speeds, and there's also the timer button. 
One thing I've not seen before though is the use of a nightlight with a planetarium and I have to say it looks fantastic. I found the standard disc that came with it to be slightly brighter than the chrome disc, but the chrome disc detail is absolutely incredible. There are just so many pinpricks of light that get projected. You can get really up close and you can see they even look like they're layered on top of each other. It's, it's a really impressive projection. And I really like the shooting stars on this as well. They seem to be a little bit more random and I'm sure they appear in different locations. Maybe that's a little bit of a trick of the eye. I'll need to watch a little bit closer, but the shooting stars look great on this and you get a real sense of looking up at the night sky. It's, it's bizarre lying down on the bed looking up. I, it, doesn't it look like I'm outside, filming outside? The camera's having a little bit of problem with the darkness. You can see it's uh, putting on a little bit of noise, but lying in a dark room, this looks fantastic on your ceiling. When you want a change of scenery, you can pop in a scenic disc. This was the extra disc that was sent to me alongside the star discs. And these look good as well. They're quite different. So you get uh, quite a bit of detail, although not as much as the star discs. But you can see here the clouds look pretty good. Now there's no animation on this. Don't think that any of these are animated. So the lightning just stays as lightning. The trees don't sway or anything like that. But this just offers a slightly different view that if you're lying down and you can have this rotating, you can have the shooting stars on it. It's just a different viewpoint. Well, I don't know about you, but I feel pretty relaxed after looking at the stars with that music in the background and adding a bit of music while you're watching the stars is a great use of any planetarium. I find it just helps cover the motor noise a little bit and just adds a nice bit of uh, ambience as you're taking a look up at the night sky. Now, obviously I played music over a lot of that, but just to give you a sense of the volume, let's turn the projector on while I'm talking and see what you think. So there's a background hum, basically. It's a fan uh, whizzing round. So it's now projecting up. You can see the lights have automatically dimmed. I really like that feature. The control lights stay on, but can you hear the fan? So you kind of get used to it, but like I say, playing some music over that, it, it just makes it for a nicer experience. Otherwise, you just like, you can just hear this background fan. I really love this with all the stars all over. I think it looks fantastic. I've never seen anything like it before and that that is a brilliant feature of this planetarium. So some of the questions I usually get asked, is it better than the Flux? Hit subscribe, join my tech tribe, that might be the next video I do. Another question I, I quite, quite often get asked is, does this zoom you around the galaxy? No it doesn't, it's just a projector, it projects 
millions of stars onto your ceiling. It doesn't move. It's not like an interactive planetarium. If that's what you're after, I suggest buying a copy of Elite Dangerous, in which case you can zip around the galaxy to your heart's content and even go land on some planets. How far is this from the ceiling? Well, I did a quick measure and it's just under two meters from my ceiling. In most cases, you'll have it probably set up like this, where you've got it on a table, bedside table, and just firing it straight up at a ceiling and it covers the ceiling really well. I do like the little details that they've done on this, not just the outer surface, but you've also got the power cord that has a little light on it. When not in use, so if you want to take it somewhere, it does come with a little cloth bag that you can just pop this in and it's got a drawstring closed top. If you're interested in learning more about this, I will put a link in the description below. I hope you've enjoyed this video. As I say, I'm going to be comparing this to the Flux soon. So hit subscribe. I'll see you on my next video.